My name is Chad Hoover. My name is Brandon Overstreet. My name is Russell Dillon. My name is Alfonso Jack. My name is Lisa Bennett. I'm Jack Snore. Cody Prather here. My name is Matt Ball. My name is Josh Carter. My name is James Bush. My name is Luke Stocking. My name is Jeff Jones. I'm Brian Bolby. My name is Jeff Hodge. My name is Kevin Franklin. My name is uh, Jamie Clancy. My name is Ronnie Ellery. My name is Randy Howell, and you're listening to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. Hello, Faith and Fishing fam. Welcome back to the Faith and Fishing podcast, bringing you the stories of how God is working in and through fishermen from all around the fishing community. I'm your host, Cam Steele, and I am excited about this episode. I feel good with this one being the last one of the year 2020. Before we get started, I do want to give a quick shout out to 413 Lure Company and to Save Your Outdoors. Both are awesome, and I encourage you to check them out. I want to make things quick because this is a loaded episode. Not only are we jamming this episode with not one, but two interviews. We're also going to be telling you how to enter the Faith and Fishing Christmas giveaway. So you're going to want to stick around for that. If you have spent any time looking at fishing content on Instagram, odds are you have come across the page called Looking for Fish. Not long ago, they popped up on my feed, often enough for me to take a deeper look into what they had going on, and I found out that they're just down the road from me, and one of the two guys that run the page is someone I've known for a long time, and I played music with and worked in youth ministry with. So since there are two guys running the page, we're going to play both interviews on the same episode so that we can get to know both halves of Looking for Fish. So right after this, we're going to go into our interview with Andrew Offen, and then jump right into our interview with Zach Pipkin. Hey y'all, just wanted to take a quick minute to tell you about my friends over at Savior Outdoors. Savior makes retrieval devices for fishing rods, action cameras, and bow fishing bows to give you peace of mind out on the water. Attach this out of the way compact float on your gear and when, not if, it ends up in the water, it releases a float so you can get it back. And reload kits get your device ready for your next outing. Head on over to SaviorOutdoors.com, that's S-A-V-U-R Outdoors.com, to learn more and hit the shop tab and use promo code FNFP15 to save on your order. Andrew, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Cam. I, uh, I've been catching up ever since you, uh, you asked, you know, if I'd be willing to come up here, I've been listening to your show, man. I'm loving it. The, the guests that you have and the stories that they're telling, man, super inspirational. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. Um, so uh, to get us started, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners? Tell us a little bit about you and about looking for fish. Yeah, so my name's Andrew Alfin, and uh, I am one of the ones that run and uh, one of the co-creators of an Instagram account called uh, Looking for Fish. That's uh, no G and the number four. So looking for fish, and uh, we um, it is started with one of my good friends, uh, Zach Pipkin. And, um, he and I both share our faith, you know, we're, I think we're pretty much cut from the same cloth and, uh, he lives here in Wilson as well. I'm, I live in Wilson, North Carolina. I'm originally from where Cam's from, um, and, uh, over there in Kinston, but, uh, we started the page, uh, probably it's been about three years now. I think it was May of 2017 or somewhere in there. <clears throat> and, uh, what it is, is just a, a hopefully we're trying to make it a one-stop shop for fishing tips and it's mainly bass fishing um but fishing tips and tricks and riggings and new baits that come out and um old baits that have you know been proven tried and true and it's just a a place where we can um you know learn new knots and um just meet all the companies that that might not be so popular on tv or something like that it's an opportunity to kind of see those mom and pop shops. Absolutely, man. And uh, how did you get into fishing? Well, it was funny. Um, me and, uh, you know, my dad, I grew up, like I said, in Kinston, and we were about an hour and a half from the beach. And so we would do some pier fishing, but never really bass fished. Um, we had, you know, brim busters and um, we had crickets. I was, we never really fished with worms. I don't know. I, I think my dad just likes the cricket idea. And so that's really all the fishing I did. We, we 
when we caught brim, we would keep them and we'd eat them. And that was that. Well, then maybe early or late high school, some of my buddies got into bass fishing. I went with them a couple of times, really didn't get into it hardcore. Um, but when I was uh, in Wilson, for some reason, the bug bit me and I wanted to, you know, give bass fishing a try. Well, I figured out that I was terrible and that's just not good for me. I, I, I'm a task driven perfectionist type person. I want to, I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to, you know, uh, I want to do it right. And so, um, Zach and I were hanging out actually, um, because both of our wives were pregnant with, um, our first daughters. We both had a daughter at the same time, hashtag girl, dad. And, um, and so we became good friends and we were hanging out and, um, he didn't know anything about fishing either. And so we kind of just went down this journey and, and kind of later on started the Instagram account, maybe two or three months after we, um, after we started just messing around fishing, we realized there was, I, we thought there was a gap on Instagram about learning how to bass fish and learning the techniques and tricks and things like that. So we, uh, we just wanted to bring people along on our journey and, uh, the rest is kind of history, man. It's really evolved into a, a pretty cool page where I still save some, some posts to be able to come back to and use in certain situations. So, um, that's kind of sort of my fishing background. Like I, we tell people all the time on the page, it's that's three years of us bass fishing and, and that's it really. And so what we've learned, we've learned in three years and hopefully we'll learn three more years worth of stuff as we, you know, experience different seasons and different water conditions and all those things. So it's been fun. For sure, man. That's awesome. And so, um, as you know, man, this is the faith in fishing podcast and we got to get into the faith. So, uh, yeah. Michelle, tell us what it is that you believe in. Man, I'll tell you what. Um, I believe that God created us from the beginning. I've been listening to a, a, um, a documentary, or not a documentary, but a commentary on the Bible. And I believe that God created us. Um, and he created us to hang out with him and to be with him. And um, somewhere along the way, we screwed it up and we sinned. And um, as much as we try to fix it ourselves and, and take care of our mistakes, we can't. And so God realized that and he sent his son, um, Jesus to take on that sin and live a perfect life and die on the cross. And he chose out of love to stay on that cross and give his life for my sin and for your sin and for all those listening, their sin and even more. And, um, when he died, he didn't stay dead. He was risen by the power of God, the creator. And uh, he was raised from the dead. And now he lives in heaven and he's prepared a place for us to go and hang out with him and worship for the rest of eternity. And while we're here, um, just to try to point us in the right direction, he sent his Holy Spirit um, to live in our hearts and to remind us and to urge us to love our neighbor and love God and serve him and be his hands and feet um, while we're here. And so I try my best to live that way and I mess it up and I screw it up, but God is faithful to forgive me of my sins and um, pick me back up, dust me off and, and, you know, push me in the right direction again. I'm super thankful for it. Absolutely, man. And so you mentioned that, uh, that we're from the same area and yeah, uh, you and I have uh, worked a bunch of different youth camps and stuff together, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I've ever heard your faith story. Uh, so how was it that you came to believe in God and, and believe in Christ? Well, I'll tell you, um, I am your typical drug kid. Um, and I say that with a smile on my face because my parents drug me to church every Sunday and they drug me to church every Wednesday and I grew up in the Pentecostal holiness denomination. And so we believe a lot of the same things that I go to a Freel Baptist church now and I'm, I'm Freel Baptist now, but we believe a lot of the same things. It's just, we worship a little bit louder. That's why I like to tell people. <laughs> um, and sometimes you might not be able to understand us, but that's okay. God knows our hearts and the, the spirit uh, knows what we need. And um, so I grew up Pentecostal holiness um, at eight years old at Falcon youth camp. I, uh, I gave my heart to Christ 
And I can remember uh, bowing my head and, and uh, the preacher was, was speaking to me. I don't know who else he was talking to, but I know for a fact he was talking to me. And I gave my heart to Jesus. And uh, I tried to live my life that way um, for a little bit. But then I, I realized, and I didn't, I didn't realize it until later, that I was saved and I had my quote-unquote get-out-of-hell-free card but I wasn't living my life for Christ. And I tell this story often, and it still gets me pretty emotional. Um, I was at West Side Original Free Will Baptist Church, and I was probably uh, 17, just about to turn 18. And um, I, I know I was that old because I wasn't in high school. I was beginning the college time, um, and maybe maybe I was in high school, but it was after school on a Wednesday night. And... Uh, it was before a youth group, and we had a phenomenal youth pastor, John Robert Harris. And um, I can remember being in the youth room there at Westside, and the song Word of God Speak came on. And this whole time, you know, I've lived for Jesus. I've, I've tried my best, but I've, I wasn't, I still had the reins to my life, if that makes sense. And um, I was listening to the song Word of God Speak, and I can remember the Holy Spirit as thick as he's ever been in a room, take over that place. And, and I ended up in the room right by myself. John Robert was in his office preparing for that evening, but I was in that youth room on the floor, face down in the carpet, crying my eyes out. And that is when I gave not just my heart to Jesus, but I gave my life to him. And I said, whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'll do it. And, and so it's, it's funny because not a lot of people know this side of me, but is and you might know it can but <clears throat> when i was growing up in high school i was in the musicals and choir and i sang and i did acting and all, and all this thing and and i wanted to go be on broadway i wanted to go to uncw major in film studies become a produ producer or director or something like that and that day at at uh west side um my life changed because it was no longer me but it was his plan and it was what God wanted me to do. And so I immediately got really scared. I backed up. Uh, I, I gave up my dream, what I thought my dream was of going to UNCW. And uh, I went to LCC, which is Lenore Community College right there in Kinston. Um, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where I was going to go. I just wanted to do what the Lord wanted me to do. And, um, he was pouring into me all the while. I didn't know it through John Robert and through the ministry there at Westside and the Fruitville Baptist denomination. And I ended up going to Mount Olive. Um, it was Mount Olive College whenever I was I was going there. And it's now the University of Mount Olive. Whoop, whoop, go Trojans. And um, I started going there and, and was plugged into some phenomenal ministries that were there. And um, I took a bunch of religion courses. I ended up becoming a math major. I don't know how, don't ask me that story. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I don't know, the, the Lord just was kind of, it, it's one of those things, and I go back to the Bible verse where your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. It's not a spotlight shining way in front of you, but it is just take this step and, and there's another step and here's one more step. And so I just kept on taking step after step and I ended up um, participating and helping lead the ministries at Mount Olive I met my beautiful wife there. She ended up playing softball at Mount Olive and, um, and we got to know each other really well, obviously. And, um, she was also involved in the ministry. And that's one thing that kind of drew us to one another. And, um, the rest is history. We ended up, um, in Wilson and, um, we help with the youth group here. We're still pretending like we're young and, and we try to help with the youth, but, um, there's different opportunities that keep on stepping up right in our path. And, you know, you know, now we got two beautiful girls and um, and we're still living our life, trying our best to point people towards Christ. And uh, some days it's it's more difficult than others. And some days it seems so easy. And I think that's probably because we get in the way or we try to do things our way. And um, and if we just surrender to Christ, man, does he have a phenomenal plan for us and for for you, Cam, and for all those listening? So we've had a good time and that's, that's as condensed of a version of my faith story as I've, I think I've ever given. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Um, it's a 
It's an amazing story. And uh, I got to ask, what with, with all of that, what does your faith mean to you? Man, you know, it gives purpose to most everything. I, I was trying to, I was actually, Zach and I were talking about looking for fish the other day and, and like we do often, but the more, more um, centered around the purpose, like what, what's our goal here? What's, you know, we've been given a platform, God's blessed it. And, and, you know, like we, we need something. And, and so then I was talking about, I was talking to Kat about church and about, and that's my wife. I was talking to her about the ministry at church and, and, and I was talking about school and I also coach basketball and, and baseball at, at Hunt um, where I teach. Um, but I was talking about all these things. And I was like, you know what? Like I fill up my life every day um, with things to do, but I've never looked at it as a schedule or a calendar or this event or that meeting or this service. My faith is really intertwined around all these things that I do. And I, and you know, fishing is so random and looking for fish is such a random thing. But if I can use that to minister and to share my faith, if I can use teaching or coaching or, you know, even something as obvious as youth ministry, if I can use that to point people towards Christ and like my faith is strengthened, you know, what does my faith mean to me is such a loaded question because it, it's everything. No matter what I'm doing, I, I try my best. And God is really showing me lately how much he is involved in every aspect of my life. And if, if there's something not going right, if there's something not, you know, clicking or working, it's because I've I've removed him from the center of said thing, whatever it is. And so, man, my faith is so important and um, it, it really kind of oils up the wheels. It, it greases up everything. It makes my life so much more smooth because I'm not worried about the outcome or this or that or the other. I'm just worried about loving and sharing my beliefs and my faith and, you know, my love with those around me. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. All right. So we are going to uh, kind of start transitioning back towards the water. Yeah. Uh, so are there any specific times out on the water you can think of that have affected your faith in any way? Um, man, it, it's hard to get past these sunsets. I think, um, I, now, I will apologize to the fishermen in the group. I don't see as many sunrises fishing <laughs> as, I do, as I do sunsets. Um, and just being out there, man, I'll tell you what, it, it's a phenomenal time. I think, you know, some of the best times that uh, on the water that kind of bring me back to my faith, there's just a fellowship that you have and the things that just pop up in conversation. Um, and then also like, man, I – I feel like a bass is so ugly, but there's something so beautiful about it. And, and everything that we see out there, man, is even, you know what, God forbid, even snakes, like <laughs> spiders and the webs and, you know, everything that we see outside, just it, it screams creator and it screams beauty. It's just a matter of how we look at it. Um, but specifics, man, I, I can't think of anything like that. Um, I think it's just one of the things where you learn to appreciate your time and your silence. Um, it's a time where I actually I listen to some good worship music and things like that. So um, it's just a fun time, man. I can hear you. I can definitely agree with with things out there screaming, screaming creator, but I have a hard time thinking of a snapping turtle a screaming beauty man <laughs> you know what i did catch one of those uh a couple months back i'll tell you man i thought it was the biggest frog bite ever and it was so beautiful i was like oh my god the guy i was fishing with, i was like lord i don't caught my pb i was ripped my bra was bent over it was so beautiful and i was getting pumped because I, I mean it was moving it was jerking and stuff it was the biggest turtle i've ever seen and that was my favorite booyah popping pad crasher that I've ever had and it wrecked the fool out of it. I couldn't throw it anymore that day. It made me so mad. <laughs> so maybe, maybe not there, but most everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. All right, man. So, um, so while we're laughing and everything, what fishing story or memory means the most to you? Oh man, what a great question. 
what fishing story means the most to me? I'm, let me think about it. Let me think. Um, gracious. I mean, I'm thinking, I, and this is so sentimental, I guess. Um, and going back to the very first few times I've ever, I can remember fishing. Like I said earlier in, in the conversation was me and my dad going down to Bogue Inlet Pier and fishing off the pier. But, and I don't know if anybody else's dad is like this, but my dad always wanted to get like after work, maybe it was like, well, when I get off today, we're just going to go up to Bogue and, and fish through the night. And so we would always get there at like nine o'clock and we would fish until like four thirty in the morning. I don't know. Maybe it's tide. I don't know. Saltwater people can back me up like the tide or something, but I can remember being out there and, and now I, I, then I didn't like it, but now I would give anything for that. But I was out there with my dad and we had these two camping chairs and then there was these old like benches at, uh, at Bogue Inlet and we would be out there fishing and I'd make it till about 1030. If we got there at nine o'clock, I'd make it till about 1030 and we wouldn't have caught anything. Oh my gracious. It was terrible. And so I'd sit down and my dad would always give me his jacket and I would lay down on them old benches at uh at Bogue Inlet and I would go to sleep and I'd wake up about one o'clock and my dad's still sitting there. He's fishing his little heart out, just you know, old man fishing, just sitting there and enjoying the breeze. And um I can remember just getting up and fishing for about 10, 15 minutes, then going back to sleep. And it was just times like that where you you really I took him for granted. And I think back now and it's it's probably one of the first memories that um, rang in my head whenever you asked me for that because that was some of the the first fishing memories that I have, and uh, looking back on it, it's it's probably some of the best times. For sure, man. So um, we are we are alike in a lot of different ways, but one way we are definitely not alike is our conversation skills. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so whenever you're out on the water, what is your typical conversation centered around? If I'm out on the water, man, you know, I, I really, and that's one thing I, I think that uh, it's just a personality trait of myself. Um, one, I'm not a fan of awkward silence. And so, and, and maybe that comes from like teaching uh, and, and kind of, I've, maybe I've grown into that or maybe I'm just ADD and I don't like there to be quiet because I'm always like squirrel. But um, usually it's, a man, it's, it's really depends on who I'm with. Um, you know, I fish with one of my good buddies, Mike May in the area, and, uh, he's got a nice boat and we go out and, um, I'll really defer the conversation to him, man. I don't know. Um, and if I'm with Zach, usually we're just trying to our best to land something. Um, that's a great question. The fishing conversation usually goes to, man, I, I've got no clue. Um, probably different presentations and, and different tricks, um, how aggravated we are about not catching a fish. Um, I couldn't tell you, man. That's a great question. All right, man. Well, you uh, you mentioned your, your girls. Um, what life advice do you wish you had been able to start off with and that you want to make sure to pass on to them? Oh, man. Um, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. With, with all the... Uh, hostility in the world if that's the way i can put it with all the um the cultural divide and the tension between different types of people and different belief systems and different cultural backgrounds and you know there it's so easy to hate and um i think i've been you know i've posted i don't post politically or anything like that for the majority of the time on facebook or or other platforms, but one thing that I, I did post, and, and it's what I believe true, man. Um, I tell them, you know, we treat everybody the same. We love everybody. Um, regardless, it's, it's a humility thing where I don't care how people treat you, but you're going to treat them with respect. And you're going to, you know, one of the first things I remember teaching Anna Blake, uh, who's my oldest, was the golden rule. And explaining that to a three-year-old is super difficult. Um, 
But one of those things that I, I really want to impress upon them is one about this God, our creator. And, um, and two, like we need to love each other, even when people don't love us back. And, um, I think that is going to be the solution to all the world's issues. Honestly, um, if I, I can't fix this problem by who I vote for, I can't fix this problem like a hundred percent by who I vote for. I can't fix the problem by stopping this issue over here or fixing this issue, but I can fix the problem by raising my girls to love people and to treat people the way that they want to be treated and to do things the right way and to live with integrity. Um, and if everybody would take that approach, like change what you can change, be the change you want to see in the world. I have a, a giant poster on my wall at school. Um, and, and it's a quote by Gandhi. It's be the change that you want to be in the world. Um, and so that's one thing that I, I try to impress upon them. And that's one thing that, um, I've really tried to dive into recently is like, if I want to see the world change, then I need to change it. If, I can change my girls if I can point my classes in the right direction, you know, without forcing Christ down their throat. But if I can talk about honesty and integrity and, and treating people the right way and doing things the right way, then then I'm doing my part and I'm trying our, our my best to kind of make the world a better place. And that's so like cliche, but um, it's definitely the way I feel. You know, I can't change your opinion. I can't change Joe Schmo's opinion, but I can raise my girls and I can treat my girls in a way that, you know, they're going to look for that in the future and they're going to be that in the future. So that's the one piece of advice is, is change your circle, you know, take care of your circle and, um, and everything else will, will take care of itself. Absolutely. That's awesome. All right, man. So I've, I've got to ask about the fishing advice too. So what fishing okay. advice do you wish you had been able to start off with? Uh, cover water. You know, I hear, I, and I was uh, on our page. We actually were able to interview um, a guy named Matt Becker. And um, he is an FLW pro out of Pennsylvania. He was just out at Surgeon, at Sturgeon Bay and uh, in Wisconsin, all these things. And um, he's a pretty cool guy. He seemed to be down to earth, good old country dude. Um, and he told us to cover water. And that's always one thing that was so surprising to me at the very beginning whenever I was fishing with you know, guys that have a boat and if I was out on the boat, like I'll, I'll take Mike May, for instance, um, we would be fishing a spot and, and for every one of my casts, he was making probably five or six casts. And a lot of that has to do with the presentation that we were using. Um, he was, he was power fishing, you know what I mean? And he was using spinner baits and he was using, he's a big cranker. So he was using crank baits left and right. I mean, he had, he probably had 10 rods on the boat. And I bet six of them or seven of them had a crankbait on them. And so he was covering water. My, I'm over there throwing a weighted Senko. You know what I mean? And right. I just, I, I, if there's a fish, I want to see that. I want to, I want to hold that fish. But he's like, well, I want the aggressive ones. I want to see what they're doing. I want to see what, you know, pattern they're on. And, um, and so I think that's one thing that I've picked up is cast where you think there should be a fish, any type of, you know, cover or any type of land anomaly that pops out or you know a point or something like that um cast to it cast where you think there's going to be a fish give it a shot if it ain't there move to the next spot and you're, you're kind of the math side of me says you're you're using the law of averages right if you cast everywhere that there's supposed to be a fish eventually there's going to be a fish and um as opposed to when i first started i'd be dragging the senko around weightless i'd be drop shotting and i'd be you know, really taking my time dissecting a, a piece of water. Really, I just need to keep on casting until I figure it out. You know what I mean? Um, so that's probably the one piece of advice that I would take is to just cover water. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I know you are mostly a bass guy, but what fish sits at the top of your bucket list? Oh, man, it's got to be a peacock. Um, or, or oh, yeah, it's probably a peacock. I could I could holler at the snook and I could want to catch a a, a a tarpon, but I think a peacock would be because I've heard like even like the South American ones where they get like eight, nine, ten pounds. Like they already the one two pounders fight like nobody's business, but a eight pound uh, peacock would be 
crazy, man. I, I, and maybe that's because uh, when we first started on YouTube, I'm seeing all these, you know, Southern Florida fishermen, you know, on YouTube, and they just, they're pulling in five. You can catch a five in a creek right next to the road in Florida. Um, right. And, uh, and then they were catching these peacocks, man. And one, they're, they're, that's an ugly fish, but that's like we were talking about earlier. That's such an ugly fish, but like something about it. It's right. beautiful. And, uh, and that's probably, that's probably at the top of my bucket list for sure. Absolutely. And is there a particular fishing spot at the top of that bucket list? Ooh. Oh, man. Uh, I, I've really, you know, everybody's going to say like Okeechobee. Um, I think that would be phenomenal if I was with, you know, Scott Martin, somebody that could take me around Okeechobee and, and just tell me, you know, Hey, punch this mat right here and reel in an eight and a half. Uh, I would love to go to Okeechobee, but you know, also those like, you know, Minnesota's got some great spots. Uh, Ooh, Clear Lake gotta be Clear Lake. What am I talking about? (laughs) I'm a big, I'm a big tactical bassing fan. Um, with Matt Allen and uh, Tim Little, and uh, I've learned a ton from them. I think, but and they talk about Clear Lake like you could get fourteen different type of fisheries out of that one body. Um, I guess it's huge. I'm assuming it's just ginormous. Um, so I think Clear Lake would have to be it. Clear Lake. I'm gonna go with Clear Lake. Yeah, I I forgot about Clear Lake. That would that would be a fun trip, man. Yeah, we'll have to take it one day. All right. All right, man, so uh, we're going to start uh, a segment we do with all of our guests called What's Your Favorite? Pretty oh. self-explanatory, um, but I'm going to ask your your favorite in a few different categories. So starting out, what's your favorite scripture? Oh, my favorite scripture is uh, – my wife was reading it last night. Um, I couldn't tell you what it is, but it's a story, um, and it is – oh, man, it's Elisha and Elijah when it – when uh, God was speaking and he kept on waking him up and he would come in there and say, here I am, you know, here's your servant. I'm listening to you. And um, Elijah was like, no, just go back. And after like the third time he tells Elisha to go back and just say it, I'm listening to you, God speak for your servant is listening. And I think that is so relevant to so often in my life. And it's, you know, it's either that, um, yeah, I, it's got to be that. You know, I could pick a New Testament. I love some Romans. Um, but I think that Old Testament story, and I, you know, the sad thing is I couldn't tell you where it is. I'd have to Google it. Um, but that story, it touches me. I think about it often because so many times the Lord speaks to us and we're not even, we think it's something else. Um, and I always try to give credit to the Lord for speaking and his Holy Spirit for like impressing upon my heart. So, I mean, I, I, I should probably have Googled it or looked it up. Um, but that's probably it. The story of Elisha. I'm pretty sure it's Elisha and Elijah. Um, you can correct me if I'm way off base. Um, I'll have to Google it too, to find out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, what about, uh, so you, you've already said a favorite Bible story. What about a new Testament story? Um, a new Testament story, you know, uh, I think there's a little, um, there's definitely a, a little nuance to the feeding of the 5,000. And uh, so often I, I relate to the little boy, uh, I, or excuse me, I wish I could relate to the little boy that gave up his lunch. And uh, he said, what is it, five loaves and two fish, or two two loaves and five, I think it's five loaves and two fish. Yeah, that's it. Um, he gives his whole lunch. Now, I'm a, I'm a portly young fellow. I'm a, I'm a little heavy set. And so I can just imagine myself and Jesus at the time, like asking and the disciples going around asking for what, you know, what's there to eat and me saying, Oh, you can have a fish and a loaf. Um, but the fact that this little boy said everything I got, you, you can have it and uh, take what you will and use it however you want to Lord. And I think um, so many times I tried in the past to hang on to little pieces and little bits of, of my life. And, you know, I talked earlier about I wanted to keep the reins of my life. But God is asking, you know, what do you have and how much are you willing to give me for me to change the world? And um, 
so often I just I want to give him everything I have. You know what I mean? Um, so that's probably my New Testament you know, focus. I think sometimes is is just giving my lunch and what he's going to do with it. He's going to provide uh, for me and for those around me. So um, that's probably one of my favorite uh, stories in the New Testament. Awesome. So what's your favorite fish to catch? Oh, man, it's got to be that old largemouth bass, I'll tell you what. Um, actually, you know what? It, it that That's by far my favorite, but I'll tell you one that was coming up on me. Um, and somebody, maybe I can get plugged into, um, his name is Travis Harrison. And uh, yeah, I, you probably know Travis. Oh, yeah. And he started an Instagram page because he does a lot of flies and, and creating his own jig heads and different things like that. And he has got me um, and put me on some speckled trout. And that, man, because you're using a light setup, and sometimes you're kind of jigging, and it is so fun um, to catch a good old speckle. And he said if I can ever kind of consistently get on a speckle bite, that it would chunk bass to the back of the list, and I would just be addicted to it. And um, if I lived a little bit closer to the speckle bite, I'm pretty sure he would be right on the money um, because I've had a good time every time I've gone with him. Um laying into some speckles so i i gotta say largemouth bass because they're everywhere around here and i can find them but i'll tell you what that speckle bite is great too absolutely man so uh what about your favorite fish to fish for my favorite fish to fish for whoo oh okay so random the blue fish and um uh, it goes back to the my uh my pier days and i finally you know one day i saw these guys at the end of the pier and they got their rod turned upside down and they are just jerking hardcore in the water like their rods are going nuts and i was like what in the world are they doing and they had these gotcha plugs on the end of some 65 pound braid and they're chunking this thing out as hard as they can and just popping it pop, i mean ripping it through the water and i'm seeing that bait just fly back and forth back and forth and then all of a sudden, this blue flash comes out of nowhere and just annihilates it. So I was like, well, we got to try this thing. Well, me and some of my buddies ended up getting into a mess of bluefish. And it was probably the most fun I've had fishing in a long time. And so bluefish, if you've never you know, caught bluefish off the pier, like jigging, um, and I mean, they'll run right. Like there'll be 20 of us on a line on one side of the pier and we're just all popping, 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 popping. And you'll see, you'll see it go like a wave down the pier where everybody be hooked up, hooked up, hooked up, hooked up. And it is probably some of the most fun I've ever had fishing. So I, I think just that one specific type jigging for, uh, for bluefish has to be, you know, it's got to be on your list of things to go do. Absolutely. I've never done it from the pier, but I've caught them from the shore and they are fun, man. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, man. And uh, what about your favorite fish to eat? Ooh, uh, it's got to be flounder, man. Uh, either flounder or trout. I, I'll say flounder. I, you know, when we go, my wife's from uh, up towards Nags Head and we get going that way. Um, Mr. James, her dad and, uh, and, and I, and, and our families will go, um, to the local place there. And I'll tell you, a plate of flounder is gotta be at the top of top of your list. And I'm sure there's tuna and I'm sure there's, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, of striped bass or rockfish. Um, but that flounder, Ooh, come on now. <laughs> and how do you like your flounder cook? Oh, come on now. I'm a big boy. Yeah. <laughs> we got to fry that thing up now. <laughs> we got to fry them up. I hear you. All right, man. And while we're on the subject of food, what's your favorite fishing snack? Ooh, my favorite fishing snack is beef jerky. If I was sponsored by beef jerky, maybe we need to look at that on our Instagram page. <laughs> but I see some of these people with these big Bridgeford uh, shirts on and hats and everything. No, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big uh, beef jerky fan. I guess that's got to be it, man. I got to have it. Snap into a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And is there any particular brand or flavor of jerky? Ah, 
man, I'm a oh the peppered the pepper. I can't remember what who what brand makes it, but that it's like the regular gas station stuff, but it's peppered, and it's like it'll get you now if you ain't ready for it. <laughs> I'm a big pepper fan, but it's not like jalapeno peppers. It's like cracked black pepper, and uh, it 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 it'll, <laughs> it'll get you in a second now, but uh, it's really good. I I really enjoy it, but you got to be ready for it. Heck yeah, man. And I won't ask for any GPS coordinates or secret spots or anything, but what's your favorite body of water to fish? Oh, man. Um, it's got to be the Contentia Creek. Um, that's where, let's see, the last, uh, if I've, you know, uh, since we started the page, we realized what this thing was. I didn't know what it was at the beginning. Like Everybody was talking about PB alert, PB alert. Um, and so we finally learned that means personal best for those of you that don't know, they were ignorant like myself when we first started. Um, but I've had four PBs since we started this whole thing. Uh, technically I got five PBs, but I don't know how much one of them weighs. So I can only go by what I got a scale on whenever I, you know, how you always catch the biggest fish when you got your scale. Um, right. <laughs> three of my four PBs have come from the Continue Creek. Um, and it runs all the way through, you know, up in Kenson, LaGrange area, Snow Hill. Um, but it also comes all the way back through Wilson. And I got I got a couple little honey holes from some people that have uh, the creek running right up through their property that I, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you the GPS like you said. But uh, but definitely the Continuing Creek is is one of my favorites. Absolutely. And what's your uh, what's your what's your PB sitting at now? It's at six. Now, <clears throat> disclaimer. Uh, it's at six five, and that is six point five. That's not six pounds five ounces. So we'll say it's at six pounds eight ounces, but it's technically six point four five on the scale. But uh, <laughs> don't tell anybody in math class we round that up to six five. It sounds a whole lot better. Really, it really slides off the tongue nice. So six five, uh, we'll say six pounds seven and a half ounces. I hear you. That's awesome. And again, I don't want to give give away too many secrets. Uh, but what's your favorite lure to throw? Oh, it's got to be a paddle tail with an underspin. Um, it's my go to. Uh, and and Zach, uh, you know the guy who runs our page with me, um, he literally calls it a cheat code. I love a paddle tail. You know, <laughs> if I'm in a smaller body of water that's got bluegill, then I'll run like a green pumpkin with an underspin, maybe a um, a brass underspin or the. Uh, the uh, gold blades, uh, but mainly, 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 I run the shad color, uh, like a sexy shad, or you know the white, um, whitish chartreuse looking uh, paddle tail swim bait with a um, a willow leaf underspin. Okay, and last but not uh, last but not least, what's your favorite time of year to fish? Ooh. Um, it's either coming up now because, uh, I do enjoy the swim jig and the paddle tail. And so those moving baits are, are gonna, they're about to come in this fall transition is going to be really nice for them. But I gotta say, you know, the pre-spawn man, it's in, uh, in North Carolina, the pre-spawn runs somewhere in like the March, April time frame, maybe March, April, May ish. It depends on, on how fast it gets hot. Um, but that pre-spawn, when you catch them big old girls that ain't spawned out yet, golly, it's got to be, it's got to be some of the best fishing that you're going to see. Right, I mean, that's probably the best, but like I said, like coming up right now, um, this fall transition where bass are feeding up to get ready for winter um, and their metabolism's a little bit slower and so they don't lose their weight as fast, it's a fun time now. But yeah. I'd have to say pre-spawn. Awesome. All right, man. Well, we are, it's hard to believe that we're coming up on 45 minutes. So we're going to start wrapping Ooh. up. Um, so if you would let us know what's up coming for you and for looking for fish. Um, let's see. We, we are pushing right now, you know, IG is Instagram is such a grind. Um, and so we're pushing right now. We, we got 93 and a half thousand, uh, followers right now. And so we are making our way, pushing towards 100,000. We think, you know, when we first started, I think 10,000 was kind of like a beyond goal. You know, we were stoked when we hit 1,000. Uh, but to think we're about 
we're trying to push towards a hundred thousand. That's going to be big for us. So we're about to do a giveaway, a hundred thousand follower giveaway. Um, so you can be looking for that on our page. We also, um, I've been enjoying, you know, faith and fishing podcast. I, I enjoy Tyler real. Um, and it, Tyler, I think his name is Tyler Anderson, but Tyler's real fishing, um, on YouTube. He also has a podcast that I've been enjoying. And then there's a tackle talk. And so all these, you know, situations came you know in the podcast and i think uh we just started our podcast as well so i'm, I'm definitely going to have cam on uh to be a guest speaker uh at some point soon uh, but that's coming down the pipe um we're on episode two right now um it's man if i could get it to be as smooth as yours are we'll be doing something right um so that's coming up uh man i couldn't tell you uh that's about it man we're gonna we're going to try to make it through these winter months and, and do this hundred K giveaway. And, um, we'll see where the chips land there. Awesome. And do you have any sponsors or supporters you want to give a shout out to? Yeah. Um, we are graciously sponsored by Daiwa, um, Daiwa fishing USA. Um, we use rods and reels. We are sponsored by K nine fishing line. Um, and we enjoy, you know, they just came out with a hundred percent fluorocarbon. So I finally got my hands on some, uh, some spools of that. And I've really enjoyed, you know, I was a big red label fan from Seaguar. I'll tell you what, man, uh, for the price point, this K9 stuff is phenomenal. We've used it for quite some time now. Um, and, uh, AFCO, AFCO clothing, um, they really kind of help us do what we need to do in terms of, you know, being sheltered in the rain and, and being cool in the summer. Um, so we've enjoyed them as well. Um, there's several more that we work with, um, but we're just having a good time. Those are probably some of our, our main ones for sure. Absolutely. And um, if our listeners want to follow looking for fish um, or get in touch with you, how do they find you? Yeah, they can find us uh, at looking for fish. No G the number four on Instagram. Uh, you can also see us, um, on bar- barely, barely on YouTube, um, always looking for fish and you can go check out our podcast. It's looking for fish. Um, everything is, is hashtag looking. If you tag us on Instagram and your catches and your pictures, we'd love to shout you out and we'd love to, um, to kind of get this community grown. Um, and that's one thing that we kind of stress is, is community, you know, are you catching fish on certain lures and, you know, helping the young anglers grow? Um, that's one thing that we, we really enjoy doing. Um, so definitely hit us up on Instagram at looking for fish. And we would love to kind of conversate with you and, and share some of your successes on the water. Absolutely. And what platforms are, are you on in your uh, podcast? Uh, we are on Spotify, Anchor, and we just got accepted uh, on iTunes. I didn't think they would let us t- go on iTunes because that's like, um, uh, I, th- I thought it was always like a big deal to be on iTunes. But I submitted our first episode and um, they picked it up. I, maybe maybe they do. If they pick ours up, they'll probably pick up anybody's. But um, we're on iTunes, Spotify, and, uh, and Anchor. Awesome. All right, man. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it and i wish you all the best man yeah thanks for having me cam i appreciate it and god bless the faith and fishing podcast is sponsored by 413 lure company 413 lure company is a family owned and operated business that puts christ first and does things the right way which shows in the way they treat their customers and in the quality of the products they're putting out their spinner baits buzz baits swim jigs bladed swim jigs and football jigs are made with really high quality components and come in a huge range of colors check out the show notes to follow a link to 413 lure company on facebook to see their line and place your order today zach welcome to the show hey thank you glad to be here man Absolutely. So to get us started off, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners. Tell us a little bit about who you are and about looking for fish. All right. Well, I'm uh, Zach Dipkin. I am 29. I live in Wilson. I am married and I have two biological daughters. I have a 16-year-old foster daughter and I have a another daughter on the way who will be here sometime in December. 
Um, I am a manager at a scrap metal recycling facility here in Wilson. I've been there for 10 years now. And looking for fish is something that we started about three years ago as a joke. Um, because our <laughs> wives didn't like that we were fishing. We're like, well, we're going to start an Instagram page. And, um, man, we ran with it. Never looked back since. Awesome. So how was it that you got into fishing, man? Pretty much when Andrew and I became really good friends, our wives were already friends and they were having daughters at the same time. So it, you know, by default we had to hang out and um, one thing led to another. We tried golf and Andrew was really good at golf and I was absolutely horrible. So that didn't work out. And, uh, we, we played basketball and you know, finally we, uh, I think we went on a trip down to the coast with a couple of, a um, couple of other buddies of ours and we fished from the pier and after that we did some bobber and worm fishing around here and then it just kind of slowly turned into well, i actually could enjoy this thing so we bought some cheap gear from Dunham's and the rest is history awesome man so uh let's let's get into it so in a nutshell uh what is it that you believe in i believe that jesus is our lord and we we won't make it to heaven without him. Absolutely. So, um, what's your faith story? How did you come to believe in Christ? Uh, I've been raised in church my whole life. Um, I was there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Went to church camp. That's actually where I met, met my wife when we were eight. Um, we started going to the same church camp, and years later, we got married at the church camp, which is a neat story in itself. But um, I accepted Christ when I was 12 at that church camp, and I didn't, uh, I, I accepted because all my friends did it. Um, right. So I knew what being a Christian was, and I knew what it meant, but I wasn't fully invested, and I didn't really put all the pieces together until my junior year of college. I had come back from church camp with a different mindset. I was a counselor that year. And, um, so I, I changed a lot in my daily habits and you know my mindset and just the people I associated with. And, and so really when it, it finally clicked, I'd have to say my junior year of college. Awesome. So, um, so you mentioned, um, accepted Christ. What, uh, can you break down what that means for us? Um, we, uh, so we did the, at church camp, we did the Friday night service and everybody dresses up and, you know, we have an altar call at the end and, um, we, we all went down and then that's where you finally accept that Jesus is Lord and he's the savior of your life. And, um, well, you know, without him, we're nothing and that we have to glorify him in all things we do. We have to put him first. We have to dive into faith-based practices and, and hang out with faith-based people um, to sharpen our, our sword with the Word and, and with Scripture and prayer and love. And um, I think that's something that's that's needed in today's society more than anything is, is a, a camaraderie of Christian folk who can put their differences aside and come together as a family of believers. Absolutely. So to uh, kind of get us transitioning back towards fishing a little bit, um, are there any specific times you can think of out on the water that affected your faith in any way? <sighs> Not on the water, but being able to use looking for fish as a platform to share the gospel and to share our beliefs with people who, you know, may, may not have ever heard or may not have ever been to church or people who know who Jesus is, but doesn't, you know, accept that he is the one true King. Um, 
I think that is where you know, Andrew and I, we've, we've been talking lately and, and something that we've tried to incorporate more and more, but just using our platform to share the gospel in itself. Absolutely. That's, that's awesome, man. So, um, uh, this is my, my favorite question of the, of the podcast here. I've gotten some, some really great answers, but, uh, what fishing story or memory means the most to you? What story means the most to me when it comes to fishing? I'd have to say the first time that we went striper fishing was really when, and, you know, no pun intended, but I, I was hooked after we went and, um, was able to lock into some, some decent sized striper and just cast after cast, we were reeling them in or getting hit and missing. And, you know, I mean, it was just the, the first time this was probably two years ago now, but that's when it really clicked that. And I actually love, I love fishing. Awesome. So, um, where, uh, where did you get to go striper fishing? Well, I can't really, it was here in North Carolina, but I can't okay. find a spot. <laughs> um, we can take you one time once they run, but, uh, I really I can't, you. I really can't burn that spot up. We got into some hot water when we posted a picture one time of, of us holding a striper at that spot. And man, did they come out of the woodwork telling that they knew what that spot was and we just burned it. Da, 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 da. So. <laughs> So that means we got to blur the backgrounds out, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Or, or yeah, hold the fish up in the water or something to where they can't even see anything. I hear you. All right, man. So um, whenever you're out fishing with somebody, this, this question um, came from my fishing buddy. I asked him to, to come up with something he had never heard asked. And um, it's been a, it's been a pretty fun one so far, but whenever you're out fishing with somebody, what's your typical conversation centered around? Generally, it's about fishing. Um, we'll, we'll probably talk about our favorite lure, or you know what you're throwing, or how you're retrieving it. Generally, it uh, which I don't really fish with other people other than Andrew, so we I mean, we talk about everything under the sun. But um, yeah, generally we keep, we keep it fishing related for the most part. Awesome. Um, so. <clears throat> You mentioned that you're a dad, um, and what life advice do you wish you had been able to start start off with, and that you want to make sure you pass along to your kids? To never never quit. Um, my dad he he instilled that that you know we we aren't quitters, and so we would try out for a sport, and I hated it. And he said, "Well, man, you you started, so you got to finish." And uh, that's something that stuck with me, and I really hope that. I'm able to pass that along to my, my daughters that whatever you start, you finish and you give it a hundred percent, no matter how bad you hate it. And you know, when you come to the end of it, even if you never do it again, you can say that you gave it everything you got and you didn't quit. And hopefully you came out better on the other end. Absolutely. What's the biggest turnaround so far in your life that you hated it whenever you started and then you kept at it and then ev and eventually loved it? Let's see something. Um, man, you know, really, uh, ever since I can remember, I, I haven't really hated something that I was doing at college. I hated college. Um, so then <laughs> I hated school and, uh, it took me seven years to get a four year degree from ACU, but I stuck it out and, and I graduated. So there you go. Uh, college was probably the one thing that I dislike the most. I hear you. And to flip that around a little bit, uh, what fishing advice you wish you had been able to start off with? Oh man. Um, I just wish that I had started earlier so I could, you know, just learn and grow at the same time. Now I'm kind of cramming all these different fishing techniques that are out there and discombobulating them with 
another technique and you know i i run a palomar knot for just about any any knot i'm tying and if andrew hears this he's gonna all but want to smack me in the head but it's just <laughs> you know learning the right techniques and making sure that i stick with it and not just go back to what is comfortable or the only thing that i know won't break or you know I hear you, and and don't feel bad, man. There are very few things that I don't tie a improved clinch knot on. Um, right, and so, it broke, don't fix it. And that's just go. the way I am. All right, man. Um, and what about uh someone who has an idea to to get started? Um, uh, maybe in content creation or just in the fishing industry in general. Do you have any advice on, on uh, have any advice for that person? Uh, it, it's a. Uh... It's a undertaking. It's a huge undertaking. It's a grind. It's a daily, um, it's a daily grind. You know, you have to, if you're, if you're doing the Instagram per se, you have to you know, like and comment and engage and post quality pictures every day. Um, it's an, it, you know, nobody calls it a job, but it's an everyday job. It's an everyday task. It's an everyday chore, however you want to word it, but to just, to grind it out and, and post quality pictures or quality content, um, stay in your lane, start how you want to finish and stick with it, man. Awesome. So, um, you've already mentioned one that, um, is pretty high up on mine, but what fish sits at the top of your bucket list to catch? I want to catch a peacock bass down in Florida. And then if we're going to go that far, I want to go down to like Brazil and get those ones that don't hear about bite your hand off those peacock that destroy the top water. Oh man, I hear you. watching those videos are phenomenal. Absolutely. What about a particular fishing spot? Is there a particular place that sits at the top of your bucket list? Um, I, I wouldn't mind going to Lake Fork. I've heard a lot about that. Um, and so we, we just went to Santee Cooper, which is on the list and that was a phenomenal phenomenal place to go it was absolutely breathtaking um to see all those cypress trees uh, just the nature and ducks and what, what whatnot in there but i would probably say lake port absolutely and yeah man i uh looking at your your pictures from from santee that was um that was phenomenal i um it actually reminded me a lot of uh of um Wiggins Mill there in uh in Wilson. Yeah, and you know it's funny you said that because we while we were flipping our weighted trick worm into those cypresses, we were like, man, this is very Wiggins Mill esque. How the trees are in the water, and you don't think to to throw there, but man, they're hunkered right down there beside the you know the root system. And there's fish there. We just never never targeted them, and now we will next time we go out there. Absolutely, man. All right. So uh, with all of our guests, we always do a segment. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's called What's Your Favorite? Um, but I ask uh, your favorite in a few different categories. Um, so to get us started off, what's your favorite scripture? It is, um, you know, it's the, the OG John 3.16. Uh, I think that one, it speaks speaks volumes if you really dive deep. You know, God so loved the world, he gave his only son, whoever believes in him shall not perish and live forever. Um, it's really easy to, to, to say, but man, you know, God loved you so much that he sacrificed his own son. And when you think about it, like there's not many people, if any, that I would sacrifice one of my daughters for. And, you know, he did it for sinners and, and the worst of the worst is, is probably one of my favorites. Absolutely, man. What about a what about a particular Bible story? I like uh, David and Goliath. That whole you know underdog, don't quit, don't don't back down, no matter what's in front of you. If you you know if you re you really think that God's in your corner, then the outcome doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you know, He's got you regardless of of what happens. So. Just give it to him and, and throw that rock. Absolutely, man. Um, so what's your favorite fish to catch? Right now, it would be the old largemouth um, in the creek. I like a creek bass. 
those those one pound creek bass have so much fight in them that they feel like you know four or five pound pond bass because they're fighting current and you know they they have to survive from all these toothy critters in the creek that um, they got a little more spunk. So I like the the creek volleyball ball. Absolutely, man. Um, and uh, what uh, what's your favorite fish to fish for? Fish to fish for? Yeah. Um, I'd have to say striper, and that season's coming soon. So hopefully, like I said, man, we'll take you out there. But uh, to to get on some striped bass, uh, the fight and them bad boys is unreal. Yeah, man. They um, I I read a book um a little while back uh called Casting Into the Light about um a woman who uh got into the competitive striped bass fishing up in uh like Martha's Vineyard. Um, and like now I, now I really want to catch a big one. (laughs) Have you ever caught one before? I have not. Oh man. Yeah. We're definitely going to have to, have to tag you. We might have to blindfold you when we take you into the spot, but we'll we'll get you on some (laughs) strike bass this year. I hear you, man. That's awesome. So, uh, what's your favorite fish to eat? I really don't like fish. I, uh, way back in uh, middle school or elementary school, we I had a fish sandwich and um, there was bones in it and it's, it's thrown me off ever since. So I, I don't eat fish. All right. Not at all. Uh-uh. Is shrimp considered a fish? <laughs> we can, we only, can take it. <laughs> yeah. That's the only seafood I eat, man. It's, it's shrimp. All right, man. Uh, but while we're on the subject of food, what, what about your favorite fish and snack? If we're bank fishing, or from the kayak, I, I don't mind spitting some sunflower seeds. They're probably my favorite snack. But if I'm on someone else's boat, it'll probably be pretzels because they're less of a mess. Okay, absolutely. Any particular flavors or brands on each? Um, pretzels, I'm good with whatever. And then the sunflower seeds are the salt and cracked pepper. They're my they're my go-to. All right, I hear you. I've never been a sunflower seed person myself. It's just too much work. But right, that's what my wife says. <laughs> and um, I, I won't ask for any secret spots or GPS coordinates or anything. <laughs> but what's your favorite body of water to fish? I'll probably say uh, the Contentia Creek right now, man. Um, that fall by in in the creek is, is you know, we had all that rain last week, so it flooded crazy, crazy high, and hopefully it's by middle of next week, it'll be back fishable, but uh, I'm loving the creek bite right now. Absolutely. Um, what about, uh, and, and like I said, I don't want to want you to have to give away too many secrets, but if you had to pick a favorite lure to throw, what would it be? Well, my all-time favorite is the Senko. Um, it's something that I'm very confident in, and I'm, I can almost guarantee you know a catch no matter the conditions at all. But um, I have forced myself to start throwing square bill and I have actually thoroughly enjoyed fishing the square bill lately because you can change the retrieve speed and you know, twitch it how you want it. Um, so square bill right now. Absolutely. How um, have you gotten comfortable with, uh, with banging it off of cover yet? Yeah. Um, I'm to the point now where, you know the fish are there they, they're in the cover and to get it you're gonna have to get as close as you can if not in it and just you know retrieve like you know how and and hope that the back treble hook doesn't doesn't snag and if it doesn't there's you're probably going to get a fish out of there but um yeah just go for it man and the worst that can happen is you get snagged and lose your lure <laughs> right all right man i uh, last but not least what's your favorite time of year to fish I'd have to say the fall bite. Um, a lot of, I catch more fish in the summer because I have more time. But you know, the sun stays out later and it's uh, not cold. It's not too too cold in the mornings or too too dark at night. But um, I like that fall transition to where they're, they're chasing the bait fish in the shallows and um, you can you can catch them up close and you don't have to really search for that cover if you don't have you know if you're on a pond and there's not much cover. 
um, in the fall, you can generally run it down the, the bank line and get a few bites. Absolutely. Well, man, we're going to start wrapping things up. Um, so, uh, what do you have, uh, what do you have coming up, uh, for you and for looking for fish? Well, we just recently got some, um, some, well, Andrew got a, a kayak and I've had one that, um, so I think we're really going to try to hit the end of 2020 and, and the beginning of 2021 on the kayak and, and really, um, dive into tips and tricks and do's and don'ts and, modifications and safety and, and all that on the kayak to where we learn it ourselves because we're you know, brand new kayakers but um, also for any of the followers out there who are new at kayaking or considering you know get into the kayak game we can help them out along the way so i think we're really going to try to hit hit kayak fishing pretty hard we're going to try to do it as as right as possible and get everything we need and um, see how that goes from there that's awesome uh careful man it is it is addicting as as it can be yeah see like i said i went out um to the creek on the kayak two weeks ago and i was like all right i'm gonna go again next week and then we had all that rain <laughs> so i'm itching to get back out to the creek on the kayak and uh like you said tossing that that square bill or that jig up in the cover and, and hoping to pull out a, a big purple i hear you um, well, do you want to, uh, to plug, uh, sponsors and supporters real quick? Oh man, you know, we, um, the page wouldn't, wouldn't be able to operate without mystery tackle box, sight baits, X zone lures, red gills fishing, um, best marine outdoors. Now we, we got a ton of, of really good companies that we've, we've worked with along the way and, and some really good ones coming soon that. Um, once we get some products in that we've ordered and, and stuff that we'll be able to work with, but yeah, everybody who's, um, helped sponsor the page has, has really aligned us and put us to where we can, we can get the most out of, of what we want to do with the page and, and try to learn and teach as much as we can. Um, and so we're very grateful for everyone who has, has helped us along the way. Absolutely. And, um, so we've already uh, talked about looking for fish, but if you wanted to uh, plug any other social media um, stuff or tell people where they can find looking for fish. All right. So yeah, we're um, our main main channel right now is on Instagram. It's at looking with no G. So L O O K I N the number four fish at looking for fish. Um, and we do have a Facebook page, but we, really, we just share at the same time. So we don't really do much on the Facebook side of things. And then, um, you know, speaking of podcasts, Andrew and I have recently started uh, looking for fish podcasts, and I think we're eleven or twelve episodes in now, and we're on Spotify, Apple Podcast, uh, Anchor, Google Podcast, any I think any podcasting station. But uh, that's also looking for fish as well, and, uh, and that's something that we've we've actually started enjoying doing. Sit down and to talk about you know, something that we love and, and not have to sweat or be cold outside and get bit by mosquitoes. So it's, it's a lot easier <laughs> to talk about something you love when you're in your comfort of your home, you know? Absolutely. And for our listeners, I can vouch that that is a phenomenal podcast. Y'all are doing a great <laughs> job, man. I really do appreciate it. We're learning as we're going. I hear you, man. So, uh, was there anything I missed that you wanted to, uh, to say before? before no, nah, man, I, you know, um, it's kudos to you for you know, for what you're doing and faith and fishing podcast, man. Not many, not many people nowadays are brave enough or courageous enough to stand up and say that you know you're a Christian, you love fishing, and this is this is your passion. So this is what you're going to talk about. And so kudos to you, man. We, we really uh, enjoy listening to your podcast and and the fact that you know, you're putting God first in in a you hate to say it, but like a godless society. Um, and, uh, so we really do appreciate all you do for the, the faith in the fishing community and, um, let's keep it up. Well, thanks, man. Another big thank you to looking for fish for coming on the show and sharing their stories with us. If you want to follow Zach and Andrew, check out looking for fish on Instagram and I will have links to that as well as their other links in the show notes. 
I'll also put links to Save Your Outdoors, the Faith and Fishing website, the social media links, and 413 Lure Company in the show notes. And since this is the last episode of 2020, I want to say thank you to all the amazing guests who have come on the show and made it possible, and also to all of y'all, the listeners, the Faith and Fishing fam. I am thankful for each and every one of y'all, and to say thank you and to say Merry Christmas, we are going to be doing a giveaway. So Wednesday, December 16th, I will be selecting one winner, and that winner will get to choose any Savior Retrieval device and it will get shipped to you. And this includes the new gear retrievers that are coming out soon, and they are going to be amazing. I'm super excited about these. So I want to give a huge thank you to Savior Outdoors for making this possible. So tomorrow, Wednesday, December 9th, there will be an Instagram post announcing the giveaway along with the rules to enter. But I didn't want this just to be an Instagram giveaway. I wanted all of you who are avid listeners of the podcast to have an advantage. So with that being said, comment on the social media post announcing this episode, telling me your favorite episode of 2020, and you will get an additional entry to the giveaway. And I will do a live stream on Instagram on the 16th to announce the winner. Be sure to be on the lookout for the Instagram post about the giveaway and make sure you take advantage of that extra entry. Good luck, everyone. Merry Christmas. Thank you all again for everything. And I will catch y'all on the first episode of 2021. Y'all take care and God bless. Thanks for listening to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. If you like this episode, please give it a rating, a review, and make sure to subscribe on whatever app you're listening to so you never miss an episode. You can follow the podcast on social media at facebook.com slash faith and fishing podcast and Instagram at faith and fishing pod. Special thanks and a big shout out to our show sponsor, 413 Lure Company, to Jonathan Enthelancy for helping me write, play, and record the music for the show, and to Tyler Worrell, the graphic designer behind our amazing logo. If you have any questions about faith, I encourage you to contact a pastor in your community. Thanks again for tuning in, and until next time, get out there and catch some fish, and I will catch you on the next episode.